let's talk power play and how it's a giant load of rotting horse corpses. At this point, you know my stance quite well, but if the concept of power play isn't apparent enough for you, here are some footnotes as to how power play is comparable to self mutilation. Starting with the basics, what is this dead horse? I mean, power play. Well, in essence, it's an additional roleplay layer for people into sort of thing. You know, those people in the community that are equivalent to fursuiting furries in conventions. I guess the easiest comparison to power play is the minor faction structure in any star system. But more, well, let's say global. There are factions, or in this case powers, that have majority of influence, and then there are smaller factions that consistently try to overthrow that one. And just like with any system, as you complete missions for certain factions, or in this case powers, you help them grow, or sabotage other ones, by lighting a doggy bag in front of their door. Oh, but did I mention that you can't choose to work for multiple powers? Yes, you have to side with one power and only then you can work for it. Well, in the meantime, other power supporters will be quite keen on constantly interdicting you for the lols. So now that I've laid down some facts, it might sound complicated and deep. Yeah, sure, if power play would be as deep as that pile of dead horses, there might actually be something interesting at least for those role players. But no, all you basically do with power play is either A, go on a killing spree just because someone out there likes to drink slightly different brand of bleach, or B, you haul a lot of hardcore porn from system to system for research, defense, and general public degeneracy. Okay, well, let's say you are into such a thing, amongst other mental deficiencies, what can you expect in return for your help? First, you get enough money to buy a rope and then hang yourself with it, and a weekly allowance. As if that power you pledged allegiance to is your mom. See, depending on which rank you have, you will get different amounts of money each week. To get better ranks, you have to slaughter innocents in the name of Space Jesus or deliver his pawn to unbelievers in hopes of converting them. Certain ranks also offer some slight benefits that varies in most cases. That can be more bounty, exploration or trade, payouts in power-controlled systems or something else. There's also a unique module that each power offers at certain rank, and this probably is the best thing they offer. With that, you can't but to feel sorry for whoever pledges allegiance to Torval or Antal. And that's it money, some rando bonus, and a unique module. These are things you might get with powerplay. Oh, but wait, you know what's even better? The fact that every week your merit points are slashed in half. And if you want to get that unique module, you have to be with that power for at least four weeks. Isn't this system absolutely wonderful? I just love it so much, I think I'm also gonna lobotomize myself with a coat hanger. Yes, this is where powerplay officially breaks down and becomes a complete mess. Something like what would happen to a toilet if you gave your grandparents laxatives and hot sauce laced applesauce. Four weeks is absolutely stupid! And sure, I get it, you shouldn't have all the modules in just a few days, but for a new player who knows nothing, seeing this sort of time limiter is just repulsive immediately. Also, the fact that every week you have to overgrind those merits is horrible! And that's not only because you lose the progress you've made thus far. See, if you can't do the combat route of merit grinding, and yes, it's a grind, you're left with power commodity hauling. And you know what, you can only carry such small amounts of these power commodities and get back so little money for doing so, it becomes disgusting to even mention now. But yeah, by the end of this, what do you get? 50 mil a week? Oh sure, with combat you have to kill 334 ships. Sure, it might not sound that much, but even if you kill like 50 ships a day, you still have to find those random spawning ships first. For me, it takes something like one to two hours to kill so many of them, and that's if RNGs smiles upon me. With power commodity holding, this situation becomes even more frustrating, and at the last level you can transport 50 power commodities every half hour, or pay credits to skip that time and pick up more. I repeat, pay credits to transport more, or wait that half hour. Okay, so let's say you're a commander at rank 1 and you want to do a non-combat power play. To get to last rank in one week, without spending credits, you would have to spend 71 hours transporting these power commodities a day. So it's literally impossible. Possible to do! And that's constantly flying every waking hour of a day! But hey, at least at the last rank you can uphold it easily, right? Sure! You'll have to do it for 7 hours every day if you don't want to pay, since you can pick up only 100 merits every hour, or 50 in half hour. So tell me, is this gonna be your next job? So either you pay for extra commodities and lose money, or go sit in a corner and try not to cry! Seriously, before making the video, I never knew how this 
disgusting the hauling part of the power play was. Oh, and apparently piracy also gives merits, but let's be honest, when has piracy ever been profitable and efficient, even on its own? And going to combat zones to earn one merit for one kill is just sickening. So again, killing enemy power supporters in free form in their controlled systems for 30 merits a pop is the fastest and most efficient way. Yet it still takes so much time out of your life, you can literally feel the game killing you. Now, let's say you're a role player and everyone suddenly chooses to support Arissa. Now, for several months she's been in the first place and most systems are under her control. What exactly is the end game here? As much as I tried reading up on this stuff, there is no end game. You just get to control the bubble and that's it. And even that's debatable if it's possible. <laughs> what stinks in here? Is that the pile of dead horses or is that manure pile next to it? At the start you got my opinion on the thing, but frankly it's odd to see that generally as a community we are lukewarm about this thing since it doesn't affect anyone's life in the slightest. So it just sits there being retarded and no one bats an eye. Well, some of us do, but we quickly get bored, unfortunately. And so this nature's mistake of a game feature just stinks up the place. And we are left here to deal with it like some unpaid intern in EA. Or a slave, whichever is worse. I mentioned the roleplaying here too, and yes, powerplay adds to the roleplay aspect, but not in a good way for most of us. See, we have two powers for feds, three for imperials, plus that one weirdo Yuri guy that sympathizes with imperials too, and the rest are on their own. For feds and imperials, this is a horrible thing, because now you have to choose which one will you pick, and after you do, you pretty much end up hating other ones, or at least playing against and further splitting the faction. Are we like those trash-loving alliance losers now? But on serious note, powerplay is a horrible thing for roleplay aspect, unless you enjoy being like the Alliance, and even then. Oh, but wait, there's one more final thought that has been rattling in my head for a long while now. When it comes to this garbage baby feature, it literally reeks of not free to play grind crap, but worse, a freemium garbage. For those that don't know, freemium games are games like Dungeon Keeper Mobile, where you need to wait literally hours before you can even make a single action. But of course, if you have had purchased the Monopoly money, you get to do it immediately. Power play and its weekly merit grind and power commodity timers just think of this freemium afterbirth. For a premium game, a game that first you have to buy, having such features or even features that would resemble this kind of piece of crap is unacceptable. I might sound very harsh today, but the more I delve into the power play as a game feature, the more it makes me sick to know that it literally follows freemium model to a T, with the exception of buying that monopoly money, so you have to do it in game constantly. And let's be honest, if devs actually made it a freemium game feature, it would sink the ship immediately. Now, in the end, I won't claim to have any final solution like Hitler or whatever. Frankly, I'm used to seeing game developers ignoring 99% suggestions any fan makes, so this was more of a therapeutic video to make for me. And maybe I informed a new player here and there, and perhaps, perhaps shook some sense into some dev about the state of the thing. This is depressing!